Ah, uh, where to start? <laughs> I guess it starts in Sydney, Australia. That was um, that was the beginning. Yeah. I'm in Sydney, Australia. You know, Australia's been one of those places where I thought I would never end up there because it's so far away. I'm very fortunate to have really amazing people here that feel like family and, and the person behind this camera is definitely one of them. Let me introduce you. Hi. <laughs> Let alone a busker playing music exactly. in the city. Exactly, and she's so talented. She's amazing. I happened to be in Sydney for this YouTube event that I was speaking at, and Subhi kindly invited me to her family house to have some dinner. Her parents were going to make this huge Pakistani meal, and you know me, not wanting to say no to a good meal, lapped up the opportunity, man. Just like about it. And today I show you step by step how do we how we cook tonder kawa. Inshallah, you will be enjoyed. First of all, this is the tunnel. This tunnel, I built this one about four years ago. They're starting the fire now, and there will be this one already about one and a half hour using all the natural uh, uh, timber or like a gum tree. I have a gum tree here. So, have you done this before? No, not to this level of detail. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. But she have no time at all. Next up, okay. Good. Now, leave this one ready. <laughs> Go back. This is the lamb. You can see Uncle getting excited because this is the fun part of the cooking. He, he's amazing. Like, Subi, I couldn't have asked for a better host of this cooking show than that. He, like, knows excited. exactly what he's doing. He's prepared yeah. everything. He's like, Nada, you're going to stand there and we're going to film this. And <laughs> he's had all the equipment ready to use. And it's just, this has been the most easiest filming I think I've done ever. That heat giving the lamb very tenderness, mm. the juicy, not dry. So basically the whole process behind everything is recreating the environment of the tunnel. Bismillah. That's it. Now, come back in one hour. Have, uh, let's see what's happening. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing? This is like the chichiri. Yeah. It's called chichiri. chichiri. Yeah. So Peter, did you grow up? loving eating your mom's food or did you want to eat like mcdonald's instead or oh yeah there's a period of time where i didn't eat anything except mcdonald's actually really? <laughs> that's why these young people they don't want to learn they like to eat but they don't want to learn no. <laughs> they're all busy they have no time to stay kitchen and like me <laughs> my dad complains about the same thing or do you ever wonder how you're gonna teach your own kids stuff? Yeah. yeah it's one of those concerns that i have yeah. Because generationally it gets less and less, yeah. right? The kind of attachment to it. And I do it. want to pass it on to them. Yeah. But it just means that I need to go to the effort to do this. It and asks questions of you more than it does them, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So evidently it's become a bit of a competition between Sophie and I because I consider myself pretty good in the kitchen. <laughs> all right, let's go and have a shot. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I get really competitive. <laughs> How's that looking? Yeah, beautiful, yeah. <laughs> this should be. <laughs> oh, no. It's different, look at the difference. That's auntie's, that's mine. Yeah. Can we use this one still? This yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We can definitely still eat it. <laughs> this is lots of pressure on you now. Yeah. <laughs> your mom's watching. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit uneven compared to yours. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> She's crumbling. Okay. She's crumbling. Right. Then slam it. Huh. Why do you slam it? To stretch it out even further. Though, There's a so. huge knot there, so I oh can see it. Oh my god. Right. Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm like, I'm stuck. Look at this. I don't know how to get out of this situation. Mom! I need help! I'm stuck. This is clearly diaspora problems. Yes. Second, third generation. It's actually really sad. 
hold on, let's, we, 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 now suddenly you have a hat. Do you want to explain what the hat is? The hat. So yeah. this is called a dopa. If you're back to Uzbekistan, <laughs> yeah. and then most of the time, and then the countryside, and the people wearing them most of the time, yeah. like yeah. Samarkand, Bukhara, and the Jantuz, all the, most of the people wearing that traditional steel today, even Atlas. What do you think if I start wearing it today? Yeah, in Sydney. I love it. Yeah. Everyone, you <laughs> so know, uh, yeah. because uh, every nation must be proud of their own culture and the traditional clothes. Don't take off your traditional clothes. Don't leave the, uh, your culture behind. Absolutely. Okay, so the first time says come out of the oven. Oh my goodness gracious. So freaking good. Auntie, it's so good. How's the stuff? Perfect. The seasoning is perfect. I'm so happy. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> now, ladies and gents, is the main event. Uncle is going to uncover the tanod where the lamb's been cooking for an hour. Is that where you can smell for the. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. <unfortunately>. Maybe in the future, right? That's a good point. Literally, the smell is a smoky, woody, deep aroma. And you can imagine all those smells and flavors are seeping into the meat over the period yeah. of like an hour, an hour and a half. And it's slow cooked, the fat's glistening over the meat. Yalla! <laughs> wow. Wowza. That's what? <laughs> That's amazing. So beautiful cook. You take it off the stick. Oh my god. Uh, it looks incredible. I, can't. I take it to the table. Yes. This is like, looks like flower, this one. <laughs> Beautiful. Very nice, they smell so good. That is legit. Mm. One of the most phenomenal lamb roasts I've seen <laughs> in a very long time, Uncle. So Just do it. That's like, it doesn't matter. Oh my God, that is the most beautiful the thing. It's, it is the... And it's so easy to cut because it's so tender, right? Mm. Test, uh, try yourself. And then you uh, talking something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, this okay. okay. It is literally one of the best lambs I've had in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try the skin, it's different flavor again. Yeah. That's, that skin is magic. It's delicious. Um, There's no other way to describe it. It's like dripping everywhere. Look at that. Yeah. With the juice. It's so tender and soft mm. and juicy. See, see that and juice the flavor? Is is everywhere. So good. Uncle, thank you so much it's for making this. It's something in your mouth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Something in your mouth. Does it remind you of like home? Oh, of course. Each time I cook this one, I feel myself at home. On my uh, home soil. Yeah, like you lost the cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It now like... go for it. Eat it. You know what the best thing about it is like there's a there's a theatrical element to it. Mm. Like when you like hosting family and friends, you're marinating. They see that process. You take it out of the tunnel. You bring it out. You place it on the table. Mm. But it's part of the theatre of hospitality. And okay. Subi was telling me how much hospitality is a massive part of their culture. And to have a spread like this when guests come, you know, they say the best gift you can give someone is time. And a lot of time has been put into this and I feel I feel blessed that they've yeah. shared it with me. Tandor yeah, kebab, Central Asian style.
That was amazing. <laughs> I'm not a professional play. This is my just a hobby, you know. And we call this one the duttar, very traditional uh, instrument by uh, and in Turkestani people. Um, tell me your oldest memory of when you were in Turkestan. In Gulja. Your first memory of Gulja. My first memory is, um, I think, um, uh, 1967. So we have a, in the mountain, we have a big, uh, big uh, in the land with uh, the animals and stock, and the horses and the lambs and the, the few people looking after us. And then uh, uh, next to the river, we have a five chadr we call. One day I just wake up. And the, and the manta, the, my mother and the yeah. cook manta with my sisters, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's the, the back of my family, the, my memory starting from there. Yeah, and actually, that then after, uh, that's the, our last the vacation in our land, and six months after, confiscated everything, and then we lost it. And why was it confiscated? This, the Chinese said, uh, they taken away everything. And the 40 Chinese army come in in the middle of the night and, and, and uh, put the shin guns all of our roof to and all the street is locked up and no one in no one out and then I was in 80 years old tied up in our hand on the back and the, naked and sitting around the, next to the wall and they pulled my mother from the bed and beating and the boy at the side of the, the gun and then two, two, three weeks, she's uh, vomiting the blood and passed away. And uh, that's the 68. And then, uh, yeah, that's the life, is, my life is starting. So how does, that, how does that feel? How does it feel to be like a child of a persecuted people, of oppressed, of oppressed people? What's the mindset? How does that affect how you associate yourself with that culture? It just becomes really sad. <laughs> it's just like every conversation at the dinner table inevitably turns to the suffering in that part of the world. And is it difficult to detach the trauma and the tragedy of that history from the history and the tradition itself? I think so. So like when you look back at your culture, is it quite a negative? It's, it's colored by negative experiences, but the culture itself... Um, right, but is it difficult to yeah. separate the two? It is difficult. So every time we speak about anything related to being Uyghur, it's always associated with how difficult the situation is. So they just become mm. part and parcel. Mm. And that affects not just how you identify yourself, but also how people within the community connect with each other. They're connecting through a, a shared painful experience, which kind of colors everything. So can you, have you ever imagined what it would be to draw from your, your Uyghur side without that negativity? Or is it impossible? I think it's possible. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Maybe perhaps we need to figure out what that does look like in the future. Hold on, this, we, 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 now suddenly you have a hat. Do you want to explain what the hat is? The hat. So this yeah. is called a tukba. What do you think if I start wearing it today here in Sydney? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Please, please. <laughs> this is not the bad one, you're on it. Please. Please.